The team of the X-Alps Academy, led by Kriegel Marr, traveled in hike and fly mode from the southernmost to the northernmost point of Switzerland. A well-prepared plan, a team attuned to each other, and fantastic conditions were good ingredients for an exciting and educational adventure. Anyone who has been dreaming of a multi-day hike and fly trip through the Alps for a long time but has not yet dared it can be inspired by this project. Subscribe to my channel for more videos about paragliding adventures. Whoa! The team of the X-Alps Academy met at the train station in Chiasso. The mood was enthusiastic and slightly tense for the adventure ahead. The first goal was to walk to the southernmost part of Switzerland and then to the launch site a few kilometers away. With the sweat still on our bodies, we were catapulted up almost a thousand meters after the start at four meters per second. Within a few minutes, we were up at 2,400 meters and we had a gigantic view. A beautiful lakescape in Italy around Lugano and Como marked the start of the flight and quickly took us to the eastern Swiss border. Flying with a relatively large group of different levels can be challenging but by working together as a team, we got further and further north. At 5.30 p.m., we decided to change course to the San Bernardino Pass instead of the Splugen Pass. In the evenings on the western slopes, we were more likely to move further north. After a quiet but technical flight, almost the entire team reached Soaza. As far as we are concerned, an adventure should be a bit of a luxury. So we booked a nice accommodation in the valley and ordered a delicious pizza. After the debriefing on the first day and an overall plan for the next day, we went to bed with fantastic memories. Learning of the day. Flying with a group provides security. It allows you to observe what a good line is and which tactics work. This ensures that you fly more efficiently. In Soaza, we were in an ideal position to start the day. An ascent with a height difference of 1,350 hectometers on a southeastern slope gave us a peace of mind for the technical flight to the Wallensee. At first glance, the conditions looked very good, but once in the air, Kriegel shared via the Zello app that the thermals were still weak, so we quickly switched to flying caution mode, making our way slowly and tactically toward the San Bernardino Pass. Loud cheers were heard from all directions as we climbed another 200 crucial meters on the south flank of the pass at 2,400 meters just before the pass, the most exciting moment. We were able to fly over the pass with enough altitude. Where air goes down, it has to rise again somewhere, so we were able to regain altitude on the other side of the valley a perfectly oriented south slope. With little effort, we flew to Flimslax. 
At the transition to the Glarnerland at 3,200 meters, the target, Wallensee, could be seen. A dreamlike alpine landscape stretched out in front of us, which was colored very beautifully by the low sun and the evening light. One last challenge east of Blaris Zoot with strong valley winds before we would cool off in the Wallen Sea. We ended the day with beautiful memories of what we had experienced together and instructive stories. We fell asleep and looked forward to the next day. Learning of the day. Flying in a group is helpful but everyone in the group should communicate openly and share any concerns or observations directly. Good flight plans are recognized more quickly because you see each other climbing or sinking into a sinking area. After a climb with very warm weather, we arrived at 11.30 a.m. at the takeoff under the Matstock Wallensee. There, we prepared our flight to the north with the different airspaces as a challenge. We had time because the flatland thermal forecast didn't look really promising until 1 p.m. The night before, there were already several plans, but no definitive plan had been made yet. The tip Kriegel gave us, work out different plans in the evening and refine them on the way to the starting spot the next day. In the evening, don't expect to have the perfect plan already stay flexible to find and use the best possible option. The plan was to come to Munchweiland, Turgau. Not exactly easy with a westerly wind in the flatland, but the first glide from 3,200 meters took us just over the next hills where small clouds were already forming and we could gain altitude again. The goal was now within reach. The view of Bodensee and the Rhine to the northernmost point was almost visible. The tension kept increasing as we got closer to the ground meter by meter, but still managed to find thermals again and again. Shortly before Zurich Airport airspace, we had to spiral down to below 2,000 meters and flew against the increasing westerly wind to wheel. Turgau. Unfortunately, one after the other pilot had to land, so the group got smaller bit by bit. The longest flights were over 40 kilometers long. Every kilometer is a bonus. A short break in the outdoor pool so we could walk for a few more miles in the cooler evenings. After 13 kilometers, we arrived at the campsite at Fraunfeld with sunset. Part of the group took it easy, came to Fraunfeld by public transport and prepared a delicious dinner at the campsite. <laughs> a pleasant evening with good conversations came to an end and a short night awaited us. Lessons of the day. It's better to deviate slightly from the ideal flying line so you don't have to fly into the wind. Flying in the flatlands is very different from flying in the mountains. Watch for signs and signals such as birds, flags, dust, moving trees, or leaves flying into the sky. Be patient. Flying in a group helps even more in the flatlands than in the mountains. To take advantage of the cool of the morning, we started our day at 5 a.m. A 50-kilometer walk lay ahead of us. There was mainly asphalt waiting for us, which soon proved to be a challenge for our feet. We walked north in good spirits, but with tired faces. A day in the heat and on the asphalt can be quite demanding. The group has helped tremendously to stay motivated. Unfortunately, part of the group ran into physical limits and took the bus for certain parts or rented an electric scooter. The last meters to the <laughs> northernmost point filled us with pride and pure joy. 
In the background, a team member played the song, We Are The Champions, a goosebump moment. After 100 kilometers on foot, 4,300 meters and 200 kilometers in the air, the time had come. We had reached the finish. With popping champagne, radiant Whoa. faces, and a difficult to put into words experience with the team, a beautiful adventure came to an end. The memories and the emotions in our hearts will stay with us for a long time to come. We want to thank our friend and trainer, Kriegel Marr, who always takes us on these great adventures again and again. Lessons of the day. Communicate in a timely and honest manner if you need something. Walk at your own pace. If you're just thinking about tapping your feet, for example, do it right away, otherwise it will be too late. Heat, pain, and exertion can greatly alter your emotional state. Good foot care before and during walking. Thank you for watching one of my adventures. Subscribe to my channel for more videos about paragliding adventures.